I'm digging it. I am a digging it. Good deal. Well, there she is. Uh, it's got a new, I don't know what that is, on the Cascadia. This is like the air actuator, the thingy ma bobber. And they just put, oh, I don't know what that is. If that's a fuel, is that the fuel pump? I think that's the fuel pump. So it's got a new one of those. No, that's not the fuel pump. That is the power steering, looks like. Because it's going up to, yep. No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, power steering. That's the power steering. So it's got a new power steering. Nice. Oh, I have to check the belts. But they also just put in a new uh, actuator, turbo actuator. These things are freaking expensive. So that's cool. Coolant looks good. He says he needs to change out the downpipe on the, the turbo downpipe. Uh, let's see. I'm supposed to look at wow, that's very difficult to get to the back here. But, all right, we're gonna climb underneath it. So awesome! I was wondering about this. It has uh, disc brakes all the way around it. It's got front and rear disc brakes. It's got the APU carrier, which is the one that I want. Comfort Pro. I hate that they paint freaking everything on this. Uh, it's the Skyrise sleeper, so it has the double bunk. The tires are, eh. Looks like they replaced these two. Yeah, because these are Bridgestones. These are, oh, these are Bridgestones. These are the same tires. Okay. Good shape. Again, I hate that they freaking paint the frame because you can't see anything. This is an old Schuster truck. I love the color. It's not like red to red, but, and it has the flow blows on it. So again, fuel economy, that's what we're going for, right? Freaking awesome. All right, let me crawl underneath here and look at the bottom end. Yeah, every time, every time, needs a carrier bearing. Every one of these that I've looked at, I always need a carrier bearing, always. So, I have to tell them to do that. But everything so far looks pretty good. So far, I am impressed. I am definitely impressed. It's a nice truck man of course these cabinets and shit i got the double bunk so i can take the daughter i got room for the kiddo and the doggy uh, so the only thing i noticed is it needs a carrier bearing it's got all the cool gauges uh, i don't know what that is oh that's suspension turbo and oil and then all that shit's also up here so Air conditioner's working, APU's working, it's got a fifth wheel slide, which I don't have, and it's got the fifth wheel unlock. So, that's awesome. I, I love having the fifth wheel unlock. It makes things actually so much better. Um, but yeah, let's go take her for a test drive. I didn't bring my mount, so you just have to believe me, right? And I love that color. That color is so it's burgundy. I love it. And it has the black, the black grill. It doesn't have the um, it doesn't have the chrome, which I prefer the black. Look, it's already beeping at me because of my seatbelt. So, all right, let's get let's get this. And it doesn't have an orange seatbelt thing, which is awesome. I hate companies that put the orange. Oh, we got to make sure you're wearing your seatbelt. You know, I'll have to get a seatbelt fooler thing for that. Let's see. Oh, look how smooth that tranny is. All right. Let's go hang it out. Because I can videotape it I get, or record. Oh. I have to say it is a lot smoother than my truck. 
even as a bobtail, my truck bounces. This kind of, it's not as oh, oh, bouncy. And this is a stupid ass intersection, huh? This is a pretty stupid intersection. We're gonna see what she does. It's got the Cummins, which it's not as loud as I, I mean, it's just as loud as those A26 engines. It's driving pretty straight. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I'm liking it. Look at that. Oh, he set, yeah, he set the perimeters, I forgot. All right, let's try the Jakes. Cummins power. We're gonna go down here a little ways. We're gonna take it for an extended test drive. I don't know what that was. Nice. All right, let me pay attention. Well, I don't know about all you international haters, man. This thing is smooth. I'm digging it. That shelf there will be removed, but I am digging her. Okay, we're gonna hook up to her. See what she looks like with the trailer attached, huh? Make sure everything's good on that end. But I'm really, I'm digging it. Like I said, I like the black, the black on the burgundy. This is awesome. I have to change out those mud flaps. Put my. Probably get rid of the flow below. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, it's got the. I'm not too hip on the. I mean, maybe we'll put the chrome bullshit on there, but. She sounds good. Yeah, she's got the black grill. All right, let's back her up. The gap difference alone is huge, man. Oh my gosh. Yep. I'm loving it, man. I have been looking for another truck to replace my truck, the 2005 Kenworth T600. Um, let me explain why I wanted to replace this, my truck, um, kind of a long story. Um, I'm going to try to make it as short as I can, but again, for you people that are new and don't know, I had a, when I first started my authority, I had a 2000, um, I think it was 16, uh, Freightliner Coronado. Love that truck. I absolutely love that truck. That was my, that was my truck. Um, that's the truck that I always wanted and it was just, it was an awesome truck. Um, I'm actually looking at a picture of it right now. It's just, I love that truck. Um, anyways, so it ended up blowing a one box during the COVID bullshit and, uh, you know, one boxes parts were just, nobody had them. Right. So, and it was under warranty. So I could have gotten the one box replaced under warranty, but again, they, they said it was on indefinite back order. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Um, they said that, uh, probably three to six months. 
I'm like, well, I can't have my truck down for three to six months. I need to make money. I still had a payment on it. You know, um, I, I, what, I, I didn't know what to do, right? So I talked to the dealer. Um, my, I, I have uh, a guy that I bought three trucks from at the Freightliner dealer um, in Hurricane, Utah, right? So I talked to him and I'm like, hey, can you buy this truck from me? Because you can afford to sit on it and wait until a one box comes in. Because again, it's covered under warranty. So it's not going to cost them anything. Um, so he actually gave me a, again, this is the time when the market was crazy. So I actually made like, I forget what it was, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 off of that truck, right? Trade, you know, giving it in, which means I had to look at another truck. So I ended up finding this truck here, the, the T600. Um, it was never meant to be it was just meant to, I need a truck. I need to get on the road. Again, equipment prices were crazy expensive, okay? Again, this was when everything was, you know, a used truck was going for $150,000, right? Like something with with 500,000 miles on it was going for $100,000. No way I could afford a freaking used truck at that time. Um, the T600 that I bought, which is crazy to think about, um, <clears throat> was $35,000. So I ended up buying that um, just to keep everything moving, right? Uh, at the time, I had a dedicated account with my reefer that I just bought and paid top freaking dollar for. Um, so I was trying to keep that going because it was paying damn good money. And again, at the time, the rates were through the roof. The trucks were through the roof. Everything was going through the roof. And of course, my truck had to break down and freaking blow up right at, at the time of, of all of this happening, right? So um, I was trying to hurry up and get a truck so I could keep this account where I was making over $10,000 a week. You know, uh, it was the reefer account. The reason why I bought my reefer is because my buddy got me this account going back and going up to Salt Lake. And then I would get a load from Salt Lake back down into California. So, like I said, it was over. It was paying over ten thousand dollars a month, or I mean a week. Um, that all fell through, right? Because he ended up losing the account because he couldn't cover because people wanted more money at the time. I think this load was paying like four dollars a mile as it was. People were asking for six, seven, eight dollars uh, a mile to go up to Salt Lake. So. He couldn't get it moved. Nobody would take the load. And he wasn't going to pay more than, you know, what the load was worth. So he ended up losing the damn account, which really sucks because it was bred. I think the loads were like ten or 12,000 pounds um, to go up to Salt Lake. It was a bitch and run. Um, frozen load. I, I mean, it was just, it was a perfect run. Um so he ended up losing that. I bought the truck. Now I got this truck and this reefer. So now I got to go play on the spot market. Again, all these videos are back, you know, two, three years ago, whenever all this crap happened, right? I got videos on it. Um, so if you want to go check those out, go check those out. The whole history behind everything that happened. So again, this truck was always meant to be a stepping stone until the prices of, of trucks started to come down, right? Well, unfortunately, it ended up uh, dropping a valve and I ended up putting over $30,000 into the truck. So now I'm $70,000 into this fucking truck, right? So maxed out everything, maxed out credit cards, you know, took a loan out just to get this truck going. Again, the, the, the one constant with trucking is it will make you a shitload of money, but it will also take all that money back, right? And it's just, people have asked, why Why did you even, you know, why did you stay in? Why didn't you get out? And it's like, you know, I don't know. But, um, so we just kept moving forward, right? Kept moving forward. Well, my buddy was having a hard time, right? He was struggling. Um, he was working for the Ukrainians. He was getting fucked over. I felt bad for him. Um, they were just doing shit that it's like, I, I just felt really like this fucked up, dude. Like, you know, um, 
So I was like, I'll help you out. Let me see if we can get a trip. Now this is like two years later after I bought the T600, right? So at this time, truck prices are going down. I'm starting to look at trucks. And then again, my buddy, I, was, I just felt bad for him, right? I'm like, dude, I... Anyway, that, that's a whole freaking story. So I said, listen, I'll try Let me see if I can get a, a truck for you, right? Let, let me let me go. I'll put in for financing and see if we can't get you a truck. So went to my buddy that bought the Coronado, uh, you know, the dealer in, in Hurricane, and uh, found a truck, um, which is the, the 2018 Cascadia, and uh, ended up, you know, getting it for zero down um and then i forget what the monthly payment is and all that stuff but i told my buddy listen um i was able to get the truck i said i i'm i'm can finance the truck i said this is the terms this is how much it's going to be do you want to move forward with it and he went ahead and said yes so ended up getting that truck right now this again was in october um i tried to get another truck in like December or January, right? And they're like, well, this truck, you know, this Daimler wouldn't finance because we just bought this other truck. So they're like, you need at least six months um, payments on this truck before Daimler will approve. So at this time, interest rates started going up through the freaking roof. Um, things were getting worse and worse. Uh, and again, this was last year. So I think January, February, like the banks were just, they didn't want to, because all these trucks that people bought like two years ago, three years ago, were starting to fold and the market just started getting flooded and banks were getting really scared on lending out money for trucks. Um, so I was getting approved for trucks, but it was just stupid. Like a $60,000, $65,000 truck was had an interest rate of like 16 17 18 percent right so my payments were like 18 19 two thousand dollars a month i'm like well fuck that i am not paying uh that much for that truck right so every two to three or four months i started looking at trucks i started i was like okay well let's try let's try this i i went to freightliner try to get daimler daimler said no um I went to, uh, I, I tried Packard. Packard gave me, you know, they said, yeah, we'll finance you. Um, but the rates were through the roof. Another bank were like, yeah, we'll finance you. Interest rates were through the roof. Everybody, I was financeable, right? But I wasn't going to pay the money that the banks were, were going to charge me as far as interest rates go. So that that's kind of, where this is leading up to. Um, but let me let me backtrack to the T600. Um, that truck is old. Uh, the interior is horrible. It's very uncomfortable. It's very drafty. Um, there's no radio in it, right? Um, I've never had a radio in that truck. Um, that That's worked. It did have a radio. I ended up taking it out and putting in a camera system that ended up not working either. Um, but where the radio went, that's where the recording the recording device went, right? So because the radio never worked, uh, the speakers are blown out. Um, it, it's just a very uncomfortable truck. I mean, it's a, it's a nice truck to drive as far as the feeling of it. But the interior, like I, I went through a rainstorm the other day. And it was blowing sideways. The whole cab like got water inside the cab. My my, I don't drive with shoes on. I drive with socks. My socks got soaked. It was coming in through the window. Um, so I was getting hit. Like even though the window was up, it was starting to come into the window, and I was getting hit. And it got my whole shoulder, my whole arm got wet. Uh, in the winter time, it's absolutely horrible. You cannot keep that truck uh, warm. If, if it's like 20, 10, 20, 30 degrees outside and the wind's blowing, it just goes right through the freaking windows. Um, there's like a huge draft up front. It's just, it's a very uncomfortable. Um, in, the, in the summertime, if it's over 100 degrees, there is no air conditioner in the back, in the cab. Um, 
so it gets hot and the front air conditioner can't keep up so you're you know in, in the newer trucks you can turn on the air conditioner in the front and the back and keep the whole truck nice and cool this truck here that back just gets extremely hot um, the front air conditioner so I'm driving you know leaning up against the freaking steering wheel trying to get as close to the vents that I can because you got hot air blowing in and it's just it's just a very uncomfortable truck um, to operate right sleeping in it is uncomfortable it has zero insulation it's like a tin can you can stick your hand like you burn your hand in the summertime if you stick it against inside the truck I can stand up in there and just the heat is just, it, it, when I say it's uncomfortable, it's an uncomfortable truck. Again, I was never supposed to have this truck for more than like a year or two. Um, I would have bought a, a truck a long time ago, but uh, you know, it was, this truck put me into debt, right? I was paying for it, um, trying to recoup the money for the repairs. And at the time I had no choice because again, I wasn't going to pay $100,000 for a flipping truck with 500,000 miles on it, right? So yeah, that, that's the story behind the T600. Um, it just, I, I, I can't drive it anymore. You know, I've been looking for a truck for the last year. And finally, eventually, I found one. I bought it. Um, it just got funded today which is the 22nd of August. I am going to pick it up tomorrow, which is Friday, the 23rd. Um, it was, I bought it in Denver. It is a 2021 uh, International LT with the uh, Cummins X15 in it, uh, efficiency series. And it has 471,000 miles on it. Um, the price was right. I think it was out the door. It's 53,000, um, over the terms of the loan, uh, I'll only be paying $12,000 in interest, which is awesome. So after everything is said and done, um, this truck will be like 60, what, 62 or 63,000, no, no. Uh, sixty sixty five thousand dollar truck, right? After everything is said and done, so um, yeah, I, I'm very excited. I finally get. Hopefully, it's a it's a good. It does have an APU. Um, it's got. I mean, you you'll see in the video. Uh, everything that it has. Uh, very excited. Wasn't expecting to get a, a international. Like I said, I was looking at. Cascadia's. I was looking at Peterbilt's 579s. I was looking at uh, Kenworth T680s. There was a T680 that I was going to pull the trigger on, but again, we couldn't, the, the financing could not get there, right? I was not going to pay. I think that one was $1,800 a month for a $65,000 truck. I'm like, I can't, I can't pay, I cannot pay that amount, right? So, anyways. I, I know this video is already getting long. Um, I'm going to try to trim it down some, but let me just, the fuel savings alone, okay? This was, a, this was a huge decision on why buying this truck compared to this T680. The fuel savings alone. Now, me and my contractor, we, we, uh, we, we basically drive the exact same amount of miles to this day. Uh, August 22nd, um, my truck has driven 63,982 miles. His truck has driven 63,974 miles. That's like a 10 mile difference, eight mile difference, something like that, right? So we're right there on, on how many miles we have driven. Um, to date, my truck has used 11,210 gallons of fuel, okay? That's just fuel in my truck. His truck has used 8,263 gallons of fuel. The average fuel price, because I don't have his, I, I don't put in his information as far, because he pays for his own fuel, right? So I don't have the cost, 
but so far the average cost of fuel for the last eight months is $3.42 a gallon, okay? I have used 2,947 more gallons than he has, okay? With a savings of $10,078, okay? That's what I could have saved driving a fuel-efficient truck. To this day, that is $1,259.84 a month. That right there pays for this new truck. Just the fuel savings alone pays for this new truck. I'm hoping I can do a little better on fuel mileage. We'll see. Um, but that's going to be my, I guess, that's where the, 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 the savings is going to come in. Now, I know we have DE, you know, DEF. That I don't have his DEF information, how much he's paid in DEF over. But even if I'm saving over $1,000 a month, um, eleven hundred dollars a month in, in in that that still pretty much pays for this truck, right? Just in fuel fuel savings alone. Now, comfortability wise, it's gonna save me. Now, um, my generator. I think my generator uses uh, again. This has an APU. Now, supposedly. The generator and the APU should, this should actually use a little bit less um, fuel than my generator. So, and gas has been been up there. So I'm hoping there'll be a little bit of savings in that. But yeah, that that's the whole point of this. I know, I you know, I know I'm getting an emissions truck, a so-called emissions truck, right? Um, but we're going to see about that. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm just, it, it'll be nice to be in a more comfortable truck. Another thing, I want to take my daughter with me. Um, my truck doesn't have upper bunk. And again, it's uncomfortable as hell to, to be in my truck. I want to be able to take my dog with me again. Um, it's very hard to take my dog in the T600. Anybody that's been in a T600... Um, or a, a W900, there's no freaking room in those trucks. That's another thing. There's there's zero room. Uh, the International is freaking huge compared to what I'm driving now. It's not as big as a um, Peterbilt 579, which is what I really, really, really wanted. But sometimes you can't get what you want, right? There's still, you know, $65,000, $70,000 for those trucks with 500,000 miles on them. So... And plus, they seem to have a lot of electrical issues. So do the T680s. Um, the internationals, like, you look up stuff on the internationals, and, um, I mean, they're just, they seem to be, I know a lot of people hate them. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, say they're, they're, they're rattly, they're, they're not built very well. Um, but a lot of the stuff, that's in there is coming out as far as the cabinets and stuff go. Yeah, the cabinets feel cheap. They look cheap. Um, but I'm going to be doing my own thing as far as the cabinets go. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really nice driving truck. Um, I'm going to make another video about, you know, buying a truck at a dealer and what they can do. And, um, but I got hooked up, right? I, I mean, I probably have gotten over $8,000 worth of parts replaced on it. Um, so yeah, I'll do a walk around and everything once I go pick it up tomorrow and, and drive it home. And um, so yeah, I'm excited. Um, I don't really care what, you know, anybody thinks about, you know, my decisions, my business decisions, but um yeah. Uh, so on that note, that's kind of the video that I wanted to make explaining what was going on. Um, and again, uh, I'll have videos coming out of me, you know, maybe I'll attach to this. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to put these out yet, but, oh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I, like I said, I'll do a walk around and get everything, you know, done and, uh, let you guys see the new truck.
So anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one later.